Hello and welcome to the Slip Slip Sis YouTube channel. I'm Che. I'm Gabs. And this is episode 37 of our podcast. Today is Sunday, April 7th, just after 9 a.m. here in California from the two different ends of it. You can find us all of our contact things below. Uh, that it? Yeah, we got a lot this episode, so we're yeah. going to try and like be efficient. Yeah, efficient, that's us. All right, okay. I'm up first. Get we in have, there. <laughs> we have two new designs that came out, mostly me. <laughs> mostly you, only you. <laughs> um, So we have a free pattern that just came out uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, Chaley named it. It's called the Lend a Hand Mittens. Um, I knit them for Knit for Food, and I think I've already donated them because I couldn't find them. Um, so now my poor sister has to pop in a picture. Ah, uh, yeah, pots. <laughs> um, they are made, they are made, they are made from a French yarn brand. Um, it's Berger de France, I guess. I got them when our grandmother, Vavi went to France maybe 10 years ago and they've just been like sitting in my stash the yarn and then I finally decided to use it um they are I guess cuff up I would I, yeah right like bottom up when yes, did you get engaged 2015 yeah 10 years that was a pretty good that was a pretty good assessment that's when she went to France <laughs> yes I got engaged in August of 2015 so nine years um they're knit cuff up you like you start here and then you go up here um it's worsted weight it's a three by one thank you for explaining knitting (laughs) I don't know because like usually I'd say cuff down but like nobody walks around with your mittens like this I just say you start at the cuff I don't know um yeah I'm really like I really like perfected the this increase this Mm. time because a lot of patterns seem to um like evenly increase through the thumb but I noticed that that doesn't actually fit your thumb when you put your thumb back in so mine increase here and then straighten back out so when your hand is like closed because most of us don't like rock walk around like this especially when it's cold like your hands are like you kind of keep your hands close together so I was always doing this just hands <laughs> um so I like it it's a free pattern on Ravelry I will also make my sister put the link down below to the free pattern so you can download it I know um I it done for, for charity all of those things I know my poor sister has is now gonna have to watch this my second um design that came out was a design for blue sky fibers and my sister also has to put in a picture because I don't have that sample. So it is the Hate Ashbury wrap and it's a ballet wrap. So it's really cute. It's um actually inspired off of Chaley and her dancing. Isn't that exciting? Uh, um, this is my consistent like 1% contribution to your designs. Yeah. Uh, so it's a ballet wrap, which uh, ballet wraps are like warm ups for dancers like you wear them but they're they're typically cropped is at least in my experience that they're like cropped and it has like a crossover style and then it ties this one uh the sample is knit in blue it's knit in they're cropped so that you can wear them over your tutu ah uh, yes um it is knit in this blue which is loon lake and the sleeves have a really fun detail. So like from here to here is gray and it's um, lace and it's knit in gray harbor. I don't have the pattern. I don't have the sample with me because I mailed it off to Blue Sky like almost a year ago now. So check it out from them. It's a really cute pattern. And I couldn't model it even if I wanted to because I am not a model sample size. I had to knit it in a very small sample size. Um, but to that end, I have some of some yarn uh, to give away as part of this. I don't know. It's the yarn I didn't need for the pattern. So I have two skeins of the blue 
which is Loon Lake. So it's two skeins and they're 50 grams each. So it's 436 yards. And then I have a full skein of the gray and like a partial skein of the gray. So this partial skein is the, I only needed the other half of this skein to make the sleeves. Uh, the blue is not enough to make a full sweater, especially in, actually in any size, but um, you'll need more yarn, but it's a pretty good start. I think you'll only need to buy like one or two more skeins, depending on what size you are. If you want to make the top, you also can make something else with this. So if you want to win this 3.5 skeins of yarn, um, what should they comment below, Che? Is your favorite or your go-to dance style or dance move? Ah, uh, yes. Tell us about some dancing. Chaley, what's uh, yours? Okay, well, I think of this because I had a jazz professor that he would always give us like a combo and there was always like four to eight counts of freestyle and he would always now now we gotta see Chaley still got he'd always be like and passe and kick and then freestyle oh and that was always his move was he would hit one of these with me the head and so I you know don't have my own but I like to do the praying mantis I call this the praying mantis nice good job you got I don't know I don't <sighs> I'm not that great at dancing, which is surprising because I teach all of the choreography for the musical. But when I can't think of what to do for like students, right? Because these are students who've never danced before. We do some solid grapevines or uh, a box step. We yes. do a square. And then if we're really getting fancy, we do a pivot turn, which is okay. very challenging <laughs> to do for some students. But I feel like you're kind of, you always keep it in. Yeah. Like you keep it right here and like your feet kind of stay, but the rest of you move. Oh, you're right. I, my knees Her like, feet don't move. My knees keep time. That's true. Yeah. It, th like there's no lift. <laughs> no, 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 no. no lift. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So if you want to win this yarn, tell us your favorite dance move or your go-to move. Okay, and like, I do tango. Like you do you like. I'm a wet, I do West coast. Yeah. Let us know. If you um, have just general style. If you're like at the clubs, I'm I'm hitting, you know, swing. Like I mean just I gotta see what the child wants. Yes. Okie dokes. Well, I think those were her two designs. So now it will be my turn. Um, sorry, that's the acquisition. I should have organized better, which is such a bummer because I like it when my sister reacts to my stuff. Um I'll just kind of vamp until she comes back. I do always wonder which child it is that needs something. It's probably Lottie. I'm back. Was it Lottie or Lenny? It was Lenny. Dang it. <laughs> he was like hitting the bars because we've got a gate to this room because mm -hmm. uh, it's Daniel's office. She was hitting the bars with her wand, kind of like, um, you know, the pirates in Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what she was doing. Trying to get your attention? Yeah. Excellent. What did she actually need? Nothing. Okay, great. You wanted to know where I was. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I haven't even shown the sock. This is, Ooh. see, I was like, I want to wait till Gav shows. Cause I like when she reacts to my stuff. Very um, preppy. I know I'm really into this striping situation. Uh, so it, I feel like it also makes my fingering um, socks feel faster when I do the stripes. Uh, so this is a sock set that Gabs and I actually split. So maybe if you want to, sh wait, can you show yours? No, Gabs can't I show can, yours. I can show the back portion of mine. She used hers for something, but we split it. Oh, it's right here. It's right here. I can use it for this. I can show this. Okay, great. So this sock set is from Yarnaceous Fibers. It's called Duchess Dinos. Gabs's contrast, I think, was kind of like a beige. Um, there it is. And mine, obviously, is this beauteous green. Um, and so I did three stripes. There are five rows each with two rows of the main in between. And then I did the same thing, but just only two stripes on the bottom with an afterthought heel. All done. Your turn. Okay. Told you I was speedy. Oh, yeah, we got to speed. I finished my cozy memories blanket. Woo! 
it was such an awful slog. I do not know how people like. I think there are the people. There are two kinds of crafters in the world: those of us who make craft cozy memories blankets, blankets, and those of us who don't. And I want to be in the those of us who don't category because this was rough. <laughs> this took so long, and it was not enjoyable. It was only enjoyable for like the first three squares. And then I wanted to quit it, but I didn't. And it's quite large. This is, oh, oopsies. It's like, is it for you? Uh, the children want it. So it'll be all right. This is the whole thing. Look at that bad boy. Like slightly, it's like a slightly larger lap one. So I enjoyed the, I enjoyed looking at it, but I did not enjoy making it because it was so slow making mitered squares takes so long and they're fingering weight mitered squares. So that happened. And then the stitch counts would get off and then I'd have to pick up stitches and that didn't go good. And then, I, I don't know, in my head, like the traditional way to make a Cozy Memories blanket border is an I-cord bind off, which maybe I've just been influenced immensely by the crazy sock lady because that's how she does it. And a couple people commented on our stories too to like, do an I cord bind? No, that would no, no, no not a snowball. A no, for me. no. So I just popped in a half double crochet border, went fast, looked cute, took me about an hour. And I used a Knit Picks Peach Melba. It's got a little bit of speckles. So it's not like a true white, which I liked because then the blank, there's no true white in the blanket. So I mixed it up, but it is done. And I'm never knitting a blanket again in my life. It is on the never do list. <laughs> um, how many rows did you end up doing? It is 13 by 15 squares. Across is 13 or I guess 15 and then up 13. Got it. It sucked because each square took me 45 minutes. And then when I started to do the math, it hurt my soul on how many hours I'd spent on this blanket. I don't think I'll ever have a knitted blanket. Nah. Unless you do one of those big arm ones where you're just like. Oh, it does sound I'm... kind of fun though. It feels like my shoulders would hurt because you have to hold your arms up. Oh, I'm all shoulders. <laughs> That's all my muscle is only shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I should do a knitted foot blanket. <laughs> ah, excellent. Yeah. Okay. This is my next uh, FO. I do have the other one, um, but didn't put it on. This is when I was typing myself to prepare for our knit for food. Challenge. Nice. You've already seen this in my knit with me or craft with me video, but these socks are finished. These are a DK pair of socks, vanilla. Um, they're the February yarnable from this year, and it's called Love is Love. And I use US threes. But if you want more details and want to know how long it took me, check out that other vid. Speedy. That's it? Efficient. Efficient. Okay. Efficient. Well, I'm still trying to cut my little hexy. So lack of efficiency. Oh, Jesus. So I finished, I can show you this side. I finished a design that I can only show you this side of. These are the Duchess Dinos socks that um, Chaley and I split, which is surprising. It's rare that we both finish, use one of our split skeins together that we didn't cast on together. So this is, there's design on the other side of this sock. I did not just design a vanilla sock, but that's why I'm only showing you one. I did finish the other one. Um, New and original, the vanilla sock. You know how many people have vanilla sock patterns out there? And I'm like, yeah. which is fine, but some people charge for theirs. And I was like, interesting, interesting marketing. Um, so Mine was the beige, and I have determined that I don't like a, cu a contrast cuff. Mm. So I didn't Hot take. I didn't do one. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> so um, it is just it's a traditional heel flap and gusset, and this, and then the design is on the other side of the sock. I've also learned that I really like um, socks that are actually like a left foot and a right foot. Oh. So like my design is opposing each other, kind of like my Christmas bobble. Yeah, my bobbles socks where the design sits on the outside of the foot on either foot. I like that. Mm. I think it's because when I wear my socks, like your big toe, my big toe is jabbier than my other toes. Right. So like it actually matters. I don't know. 
Well, Nitty Natty does that special toe. Oh, the ergonomic toe? Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I wouldn't be able to see it. You know what I mean? When I'm like putting it on like this, like it's a cable design. So it's a pretty big cable design on my blanket. Yeah. Well, like your other one, which I don't remember the actual name. I just remember what I wanted to call it. What did you want to call it? Nice bobs. Oh, yes. I remember. Yeah, that's the, that's the, I think it's called Garlands and Bobbles. Yeah, but I think nice bobs is funnier. <laughs> All right. Sure. Okay. My third fo are these Ooh. super fun they kind of remind me of like crayola they um, do these are my rainbows run the world socks the main um stripes stri self striping is from desert vista dye works it would the colors were based on all of the beautiful monochrome outfits from the 2020 or when um president biden was inaugurated uh, or the inauguration and so those are all reflected in here and then I didn't think I was gonna have enough to do it the, without the contrast turns out I don't actually use even 50 grams um, for this but I used some of my leftover row one minis um, but also didn't have enough to do the same mini for each one so but I think it kind of goes with the vibe I like that they're different I think it makes it more exciting um, so this is birch Dye Works, right? I know it's called Goldfish. Yeah. This one is Birch Dye Works and it's called Goldfish. And then this one is um, Western Sky Knits Cricket. Nice. I like those. Those are fun. I have that color too, but I'm using mine to knit something else. That's also a secret. I'm really being that annoying person who's like, I can't tell you, but I've been working on awesome stuff. <laughs> but that one that announcement should be soon okay next thing I finished my vergla vergla sweater scarf cowl what is this wrap it wrap it was supposed to be a wrap it was supposed to be much longer than this it was supposed to be four sock sets I knit two because it was supposed I, to be everything else other than what I did yeah it was a test knit but the test knit only required me to knit this white bit this panel and then this white bit again and then I looked at it. I was like, ain't no way. There ain't no way I'm ever going to finish this. And I don't really wear wraps anyway, because I don't like when things slide off my shoulders. So I made it an infinity scarf. I added this bit in and now it's like peak winter. <laughs> Perfect. But I actually really like that you can kind of see all the colors because I feel like with sock sets, sometimes um, you don't get to feature all your things because so much of it is like in your shoe unless you wear the clear little boot thingies but I can't you can't I can't teach all day in those thingies um, so it's slightly kind of tightish on my neck it's a little bit of it's it's giving neck brace you have to block it <laughs> yeah so I'm gonna block it okay so I'm waiting for it to get a little bit warmer it's not helpful that my brain is also in on my neck right now so um, I really liked it. Uh, I like how it looks. I did not enjoy the process. Um, it's one of those, it was a product in it for sure. I loved the colors. The colors are my favorite Earl Grey fiber company, who's no longer dying. I had an oopsie here, but I didn't care. I should not have put the purple in and should have just joined it here. So it would have stayed equal. Like, see, I'm not like this one just joined here. Oh, but I needed more length because it was already giving neck brace. So <laughs> I had to put in the purple mini. But I think when it's on my neck, you can't really notice. Um, yes. So it, this is the Verglas wrap by Lindsay Fowler. And it's actually meant to be a wrap, not an infinity scarf. I just uh, three needle bind off. I think you can kind of see it here. I three needle bind off this together and called it good because... I figured finished was better than perfect and I had fulfilled my test knit obligations this was actually the wrap that broke me on test knitting um other than when I have to do it for my sister it's going super good I'm I am 50 percent of the way through this test knit Chaley are you gonna show them yeah yeah yeah. I'm waiting I'm done that was three. oh oh you're done I have more one, two, three. Well, okay. I finished my sister, the first half of the test knit for my sister's DK Mix Medley socks. Um, 
and also only changed everything 19 times. <laughs> okay, so these are, what does she call it? Simple pearl. This is her simple pearl texture with a two by two rib and then an eye of partridge heel. You're really was, selling this pattern for them, Gab. Thank you. I was mad the whole time. It, the issue is not the pattern. It was actually really cute. I actually did like that I could like mix and match, except for the part where I forgot that I had agreed to like test it. it. And I, so I'm going through, I'm like, oh, I'm going to mix and match this. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm like, oh, that's not my assignment. <laughs> Assignment. <laughs> I gave you the option to pick your assignment. You're like, I don't care. I'll do any of them. Yeah. So this is um, Koigu, which I got from Uncommon Thread Swap, um, Yarn Swap in February. I ha I do have the second one. I finished them both. I did like that it did this little micro striping situation. Mm. And then the Eye of Partridge Heel came out cute because it looks like a little bit like mosaic-y, stained glassy. Um I knit this on fingering weight, but it was supposed to be, it's DK, but I cast on 48 stitches. Knit That's it, the like second size. Yes. It's the middle size. Uh, 48 stitches. Thought that I was following the pattern. Mm -hmm. Apparently can't count. Um, and had 30 stitches for the foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. 30 stitches on one needle for the foot and then 24, right? Cause that was what I was supposed to have. So I was supposed to have 24 and 24, but I did not. I had 54 and I realized that when I got to the toe and I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. so I won it, but her pattern's fine. Um, so, and then I had to obviously do the same thing on the other foot, right? Cause then they would be silly feet. So I've done that. Look for Chaley's pattern. When I finish testing the other sock, which I'm committing oh, yeah. to casting on today. So May 1st, maybe. Maybe. I knit socks fast. It really just depends on if I'm procrastinating or not, but I'm committing to procrastinate on this one. No, no, no. I got it. I'm on it. Focused. Um, oh, I have another finished object, huh? Okay, so that was not three gabs. Well, I forgot about the Virgilus wrap, and then I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. So I finished my dinosaur blanket. Ah, yes. It's for our Uncle Anthony, who does not watch YouTube. Let's be real. He doesn't even respond to our text messages half the time. It's not like I'm going to spoil it. Um, look, it came out so cute. So. I like it. I love it, too. It's like all in the same palette, right? It's kind of a muted palette. I Earth tones. Yes. It is a mix of a bunch of different advents. If you want to see the whole process, I have three YouTube videos on the process of knitting this blanket because they're all advents yeah. really milked that one yes i know um so yeah check that out i loved i loved how it looked right it's a mix of double crochets and granny stitches and it came out so darn cute but oh my gosh the pattern was not my friend it was not my friend i've re i've I'm considering, I'm probably going to just write the notes on my Ravelry project page because it's not my design idea, right? So I want to go be like publishing something that's not mine. So I might just write the recipe of like what I roughly did on my project page on Ravelry this week because people have been asking, like, I've, which is more than normal. Like six people have been like, what pattern did you use? How did you do it? And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> Because the pattern, I had to heavy modifications to make it work. I tore it out like four times. All right. That's it for my finished objects. Yeah, I only have two whips. I only have two as well. Are you sure? Yes, because I haven't cast on my DK Mix Medley socks like I was supposed to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shall I go or would you like to go? I've talked a lot. You can go. Okay. So um, I am working on a whip, but I'll show this one first since we're on the blanket theme. So this is in my, I want to say bucket. Yeah, because it's it's smaller than mine, right? Yeah. This is my bucket tote from Erin Lane Bags in the like treat show self, which was from Hank Miss, I think this mm -hmm. year. 
uh, fabric. And I am working on a DK granny square blanket. And I am making this for my friend Michaela using my Dragon Horde yarn, a shitty as in like Schitt's Creek, uh, Christmas in July advent. And I'm just doing all the granny squares and I'm just holding the yarn double. And so the granny square pattern following is Nitty Natty's, like I think it's called granny square. Um, it's linked in my thing. It's a free pattern as well for this. And I do four rounds for these and for each, um, like little mini, I get three squares. Um, so I have done these ones and now I'm just going to show you all of them. These ones, nice. they all had names. So they all had names like here, are the little things, but then I, I decided I was in like a winding frenzy. So I wound them all up. So I don't have them. Like I was not organized enough to like keep them with their name and also didn't care that much um, to do that. So here we are. And then these ones. And these ones, and these ones. I think this one was fold in the cheese. Um, and then these ones. Oh my gosh! And these ones. Really? And these ones. And then, because it's thirty-one days that it was for, that wasn't gonna be like an easy number for me to like split it so I just threw in another mini which is our fave Earl Grey Fiber Company um, who's no longer dying I have her Netflix and chill advent from 2020 and one of the like shows that was like part of the advent was Shit's Creek so I used one of the Shit's Creek colors ah, on brand so I felt like it, it was fine and that is these ones so like it goes like here's the whole does stack. Does Michaela like Schitt's Creek? She does. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> these are all the ones I have finished. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, of my thirty-two colors done. And here are all of them in here. And then, um, I'm think I'm trying to think through what I want to use to join them because I'm trying to use what I have, but I don't think I have enough of anyone's like skein that would match all of them. What are you looking for? Um, well, no, I just like because I have to hold the yarn double to make it DK. I want it all to kind of go together, you know. Because what, what about the per what about per pinkle? Yeah, but I, we were supposed to make sweaters with that. It's fine. It's fine. I have a plan because I have a lot of like, hold on, I'll go grab it. Like I have a lot of yarns that are like this kind of general color. Uh-huh. So I might be able to like pull it together because I think I also have. I. Yeah, like I see like it's not the same dyer. Oopsie. Like it's not the same at all, but like, come on. Is this close enough? This is I yours. Know. Cause I could, I you could, um, don't hold them double with themselves, hold them double with each other. No, no, no. I know that, but I still don't think it's going to be enough because it's 96 squares to attach. How much did you use for Vevi's blanket? I used, it, I only did fingering. So I only, I was held, it wasn't held double. And I used like one plus some. And of course I didn't measure it. Like, why would I do that? That's just silliness. But then I do also have, okay, hold on now. This is not me being efficient because I didn't think this through at all. Um, all right, let me look and see what I got too. I do also have this other stuff from nitpicks that I could use I'm just not entirely like sold on the colors because they're not as cute you know like where'd you go I'm looking to find I'm looking for yard but look come look at this because I also have these and this is this is good this I think would be plenty um it's just not as cute you know like, I like this better. 
No, I think it's too crazy. You have to remember it's Michaela. Like, oh, right. Because I got not, a lot of this. It's it, it's Michaela who's. Oh, right. Oh, 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 oh. We're all waiting now with bated breath. I'm looking. My stash is not as organized as yours. Jeez. All right. This is a good time if I had some elevator music to pop in. <laughs> Uh, Hold on. I'm working on it. So this is the hazard of organize of putting everything you own in yarn cozies. Is you can't identify them from the outside. Hold on. This feels like this is on you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, okay. this is cotton. I think that's a bad idea. Why? Because it'll stretch. It's a blanket. I know. The weight of it's going to pull it. I think it'll be fine. What about this? You're not going to have enough of that. You only have two of those. I got three. I still don't think that's going to be enough. Really? But no. you said you used a skein of... Yeah, for 64 squares. Oh. 96. And it's oh. got to be held double. But see, my other plants that we don't like, we don't like the turquoise. I thought so. I can kind of figure out how to get rid of these. <laughs> I got to do something with these. Because I was also thinking, because I have those, you know, those two kind of like beautiful reddish purples. Mm -hmm. um, I do also have... Like, where did it go? No, I've lost it. Drat. I don't know. Like, do I just hold it double with other yarns that I also have two of, you know? Yeah. Because then it would be an interesting kind of morally thing. Yeah. I could do that. Maybe I'll pull those out and put them together with it. And figure out which ones I want to put them with to make her thing because mm -hmm. like I think she'll still use it because it's, it's like, a blanket it's a blanket you know it's not on her body I already asked her if she would use something that was like multicolored, and she was like for what and I'm like warmth she's like yeah I'll use anything for warmth so but my original plan was to do that turquoise but it's just not as exciting mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned because I might just give away the turquoise because I don't know what to do with it. Also, I got it for free. She's been but, trying to pawn that off on me for like years. Like, I <laughs> got it. Nice turquoise caps. I got it for from my friend. So I don't actually like have, I have no attachment. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Okay. I am still making my my hexes because I'm apparently just incredibly influenced by Knitting Natty, which is awesome. Um, look, I have hexy stripes. It's an insane scrappy blanket. What are you using to attach it? I'm using this really crazy um, blue, what cream blue and red color because it makes me think of like summer, like the Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. Um which I got the yarn is from Capella Luna, which is I bought from Gary's D stash for good. Um, and then the pattern is coastline by nautical crochet. And then I'm joining them as I go. And this is as far as I've gotten. I think it's going to be a super like fun, bright summer blanket, but I did do some like exciting two colors, right? This was from my oh. work. Right. So I'm trying, like, if I'm using, same like this one, this is the one I'm crocheting. This is like the two tone from the sock set. So I'm like trying to like capture what the project was by like having. Mm -hmm. So it's super cool. It's going to be really, really like bright and vibrant. Um, and my children are really into counting right now. So they're really enjoying when I do things like this because then they can count <laughs> each square. And they keep trying to claim the blanket, which I, I'm fine if they want this blanket because it's just, it's another scrappy blanket. It's the, it's the blanket I started uh, 
as I was finishing the cozy memories be to use up the scraps. Mm -hmm. So I like it. My word of warning is make sure you know how to count to 18 when you do this blanket because Gab's is Hexies. Four of the five of them are out of 17. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am in the middle of almost being done with the first sock to Lewis. <laughs> I um, like it. I That's thought you thing. would. I like I it. I thought you would. So these are just some vanilla socks I've been working on. You might notice I just did a little interesting color dip here. It's it's very subtle because everything is crazy. Um, so you can kind of see it like better, I guess, if I held the yarn. So this is the main color, which is kind of getting blown out because of this beautiful sun that I have coming in. And then this is just like, I had this left over from... Uh, when we did our grannies in the row socks mm -hmm. um, and each of these are 10 grams. And I know I used like, you know, 0. 0.2 of it for those little tiny granny squares. And now I've only, you know, used another 0. 0.2 for nice. the, um, because I'm only doing it for the color dip, but then that should bring it under 10. So then I can put this in your magic knot ball. <laughs> uh, and so I'm on the, the toe. I'm about to transition over to my, um, uh, uh, magic loop needles to do the rest of the toe because you can't do it on nine inch circs. But the main color, this hot color is um, Comfort and Joy Yarns? I think so. Comfort and Joy Yarn Co. Um, and we got this during the Wine Country Yarn Hop um, from the lovely place in Healdsburg. Pearls of Joy. Thank you. And this one is called Garden Party. I think it was it, it was their Wine Country Yarn Hop color special color. Yeah. So this is the label. I'm having a grand time. I'm trying to get this done at least through the cuff because I think I want to go see a movie later, and this would be good for movie knitting. Awesome. So I have started. This is surprising. I only have crochet whips. Oh. Um, I didn't realize that. I have my Battenberg that I'm making. Hey, oh golly. Why <laughs> uh, is there like a little cutout? <laughs> that's how you crochet it together. It's a silly way of crocheting it together. But why how you how are you gonna fill that in? Buddy, you should ask. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm not making this the way the pattern says to do it. Because the way the pattern says to do it is, um, like I did this one first. So I did the center cream and went four around. And then you're supposed to do another center cream and four around and then join them together. But I decided I didn't want to do that. So I'm going from the corner out. So every day, I've obviously been doing this for five days. I do one of these white squares. So like this, so I did the center one. Then I added, I'm just adding one as I go. It's easy because I just crochet the white and then I single crochet behind it to join it together. So it looks insane, but it's not hard. And then I've been weaving in the ends as I go, unless I can crochet over the top of them. Like this one, I like these I can crochet over the top, but I've been weaving in the centers as I go, this blanket is for my sister. If it's, if she likes it enough to not think it's insane, if not, my children want it. Um, so yes, the yarn is mostly hypnotic yarn so far. All of this is my sister's yarn. Not, no, not you guava be kidding me. Yes. But all of this is Chaley's except for this. That was this you. And you gave it to me and then I let you have it back to use it for your thing. Yes, the cream is Woolstock Worsted um, from Blue Sky Fibers. This square is actually the sock that Chaley, the Love is Love. It's the leftovers of Chaley's sock. So now if you're interested in purse thing, you can see what it looks like as a crochet and knit. And it we do actually have a Yarnable affiliate link, which I never say. Oh, yeah, we got one of those. Uh, <laughs> we're not good at shilling stuff. Um, so... Yes, this is going to take forever. And I have grievously miscalculated. So it is going to be a gigantic blanket because in my head, I was like, okay, I got it. 30 squares by 60 squares, right? Sweet. Perfect. 
Oh, you didn't think about the white ones. She didn't calculate them. You just did all the colors. Oh, that's a big boy. <laughs> so, oh. so far I've got about 180 squares, colored squares, more like 167, but close, right? So that's why I started to start joining, which means I also have at least 160 cream squares to make. Um, so that's 300 yarn. No, I'm going to have to buy more. Oh, okay. um, but I'm just going to keep making it and see where I end up, which is also why I want to start in the corner so I could go out, get the final dimensions, and then see. And if I've got too many Battenbergs, I'll make a smaller blanket or I'll do something else with it. Um, yes, my goal is to do one square a day. That's how I'm like... So then it'll take me six months, but then at least I'm not like getting bogged down by it. And then I'm like, sweet, done my one square a day and then move on with my life because right. it's a, it's potentially five squares of ends weaving in. And I, that's not my, ta I, I don't love it at all. So I'm trying to limit how many ends I have to weave in each day. But I know if I leave it till the end and I have 300 ends to weave in, I'll just hand it to my sister with the ends not in. Thank you. I'll just be like, here's your blanket. Here, I also gave you a project to do. <laughs> here's your blanket. I don't want it. So, how are you deciding which colored square to put in? Willy nilly. Mm, that makes it exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. Except the only less exciting bit is that my bag is clear on one side, so I can kind of see which one I'm grabbing. So wow. I have to like, close my eyes. But I'm trying to use up all like no repeats yet because I'm only, I'm not that far into the blanket right right but I do have repeats I've got about anywhere between one and six of a color right yes <laughs> no nah, it's fine some of them are mine like two percent of the blanket is my yarn except for the white the white is my yarn have you used that crazy yellow one yet no I almost had it but then I didn't <laughs> Just happened to drop it down <laughs> Yeah. So it's fun. The Battenberg is a lot of ends. Yeah. Well, any one of these like piece it together ones are kind of a lot of ends. Like where you oh, make yeah. all the squares and then because it's going to be a lot of ends from Michaela's blanket for me. Oh, my granny advent one that I have not woven the ends in in about Two weeks is horrible right now. There's so many ends and I just, I can't. I need to sit down and deal with it, but I don't want to. Uh, do you have any acquisitions? No, just the ones we sh I showed for Yarn Crawl. So I'm not going to show them again. I went on the Bay Area Yarn Crawl. So if you would like to see the acquisitions for that, um, check out our video for that one. Hey. I got this month's Yarnable. Um, so shut your eyes if you don't want to see it. But I will, I don't know. I don't actually describe the color ever, really. So I think this month's theme was donuts. But I left the tag out there. So bear with me. So I think everybody Didn't might get a little. Write, Didn't you just write the name down in your journal? Yeah, but I don't have like the info on each of these. Uh these things oh uh, okay I think everybody is gonna get a little gift from what we got for extras because I got these wildflower seed tabs oh exciting I'm gonna give these to you thank you um they're 10 plantable strips I'll let you figure out what to do with that um and then you got these really cute um, needle stoppers. Those are cute. On brand. And then I got one of these micro puzzles. Oh, nice. I'm going to save this for dad. Nice. Except I've already given him one of these and he hated it so much because it was because all the pieces are like the same. Oh. So it was really hard for him. <laughs> but they also, because they're so little, they don't lock in as better. Oh, right, because they don't have, and they're like yeah. plastic, right? And I think part of puzzles is like the cardboard kind of. No, grip. they're cardboard still. Oh. They're just like, you know, they don't click in as good because they're so little. So I'll, maybe I'll save this for his birthday. Exciting. 
for daddy. And then this is the yarn, which I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised by because it looked a little bit more neutral in the picture, but it has some pretty fun speckles. Ooh, ooh. That's so I actually am kind of happy with it. I almost considered skipping this month, but I'm like, I liked the name of it. Um, and so I thought the extras would be good, which they were. Uh, so this is April 2024. Life is short. Eat the donut. Oh, nice. Ta-da! That's my only acquisition so far. <laughs> nice. Um, what else do I have to say? Oh. We have March stats. Oh, and then my new, the new things I've been making you that I want you to feedback on. So do you want to do stats first? Sure. Let me get my notebook. Because I'm actually at the work part where I need to kitchener the toe of my sock. So would you like to go first? Okay. So for my March stashing down... I used seven different yarns. And again, for clarification, Gabrielle and I are doing this differently. I'm only counting the full, full intact, like 50 to 100 grams gains. I'm not counting any of my minis or any of my scraps. So like, like these socks only counted as using one skein, even though I used up each of these minis. And I forgot that I owned this sock set um so I just never put included it in my stash so it didn't also didn't count for anything for that's me that's a bummer when you're like I'm knitting from stash and I'm like I forgot to include that one uh, so here we are in so I could take it back out <laughs> yeah yeah I didn't do that um so I used up seven and I acquired four nice. um, and minus three so over the course of Jan to March Wait, so that's one. So I'm at minus 11 for the year nice. so far. And in terms of finished objects, I finished 11 objects and nine of them are socks. I have one, I did one float toe and one blanket. This month? Mm -hmm. Or March. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right, so I started mine. I count everything. I count every single little scrap of yarn in the stash because if I didn't, I would I would make too many excuses for myself, and or like pull some yarn out of it. And be like that doesn't count. So I knew I had to count everything. So at on December thirty first, I had four hundred thirty four skeins of yarn. On March thirty first, I had three hundred fifty six skeins of yarn. So it's like roughly about 80 went out of my stash, which is pretty good. But majority of them were many. Um, in the month of March, I received um, six. I was gifted six skeins, five from my sister and one I won in a giveaway. And I purchased eight skeins of yarn all at the Bay Area Yard Curl. So I had... 14 skeins come in and was that this wasn't swap month though what swap month when you did the um Los Altos people no that was February that was February got it that's how I ended up with um loss so it was 25 in February I'm with you now so uh, at the beginning of March I had 381 at the end of March I had 356 so that is about 25 skeins came out in the month of March, which is pretty solid. Most of them were minis, but at least for me for March is a low month because of the musical. Um, I opened I, I opened it on the 6th and then like needed to recover <laughs> after the musical. Uh, so I think April will be a much more productive month for me. Um, did I finish any... I finished like three things in March. I finished two, three pairs of mittens, love story socks, and the Verglas wrap. That's it. So I finished five things, which seems pretty, which seems pretty on track for how the month was going. The month was rough. Um, 
we got sick. The girls got sick. Daniel's been sick for about, Daniel's my husband. He's been sick for about five weeks, which has not been great. We don't have COVID. We've tested like 50,000 times. It's just something else. Um, but now it's been spring break, so everything's been cooking. I finished four projects in a week. It's the worst. I've had such a busy week and all she does is text me. I felt like a 13 hour day on Friday and I'm like messages. At one point I had sent her so many messages, you know, like when it's like when you talk to a person, you, person, you, it was just calves. Even when I opened my own screen, I could only see what I had said. But did you tell them what you did on Tuesday or Wednesday? <laughs> what was I doing? Like, she hadn't responded since three, and it was like 8.30 at that point, and I hadn't heard from her. And I was like, this is weird, because usually, like, I know that, like, she's driving and she talks to mom, but I'm like, this is weird. She should be home by now. She didn't say it was a super long day. Um, but then I have her GPS track, because she lives alone. Um, so, so do my parents. So I looked, and she, I mean, she was home. And I was like, she hasn't responded to me, but she's home. And mom was texting me. So I'm like, well, she's not on the phone with mom, right? Because that's usually my go-to is like, if I can't get a hold of one of them, I text the other. And if the other doesn't respond as well, I'm like, they're probably talking to each other. Um, so don't worry about it. And then I asked Daniel, I was like, have you got a reel from Chaley? Because that's basically their main mode of trans of communication is real. So he's like, no, I haven't gotten a reel from her at all today. And then I checked and her Instagram hadn't been active either. I was like, oh my gosh, she's at home. She hasn't texted me back. She's not talking to mom. There isn't an inst. Her Instagram isn't active. She's slipped and fallen and hit her head on the shower floor because she lives alone. So no one's going to know that she's not okay until she, <laughs> she doesn't show up at work the next morning. And what if she's just like bumped her head and you like with head injuries, you need to like address them quickly, right? Like you can't just like chill on your bathroom floor for 12 hours. Like this could be the moment so that I call her. I'm like, are you okay? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I went out to dinner with a friend because I do have a social life. Didn't report it to the committee, apparently. And I think she checked as soon as I had like pulled into my home because I got home at like 8 30. Um, because I had to also I had dinner and then I had to go to Target to pick up some stuff for all of the events that have been making my days crazy. So I was like, what do you want? Like, I'm fine. I was at Target and then I was at dinner. So then I was going to be late the next two days. I had to like submit to the committee that like, by the way, I'm working out until probably like seven on Thursday. And then I won't be home till like 11 o'clock at night on Friday. <laughs> yeah. But see, but those days you also texted me past three. So I wasn't as worried about it. Did I tell you what I did on Friday? Yes. Mom told me. Damn, nothing. She's like a radio. <laughs> no, it was actually dad. And then mom chimed in. I locked, uh, so 13 hour day. So I got to school at 530 and I guess it, yeah, that's about it. Um, we had back-to-back -back events. And so the last event ended around seven. And so I wasn't leaving the office until 730, but one of our colleagues is leaving. So we were going out to like drinks to like celebrate because next week we also have three day back-to-back -back days of events and I leave for another trip. Um, so I'm like on autopilot, like exhausted because it's like been there, been at school since 530. So I've been up since 430. And I like put my stuff in the car. I pull my purse out. I pull the keys out because I'm going to need it to go walk into the bar. And I'm like, I'm at school. It's time to go. Shut the door. Lock the car because I'm just like autopiloting. And usually my key, if my car is, it's a smart car. Um, so it like auto unlocks if it senses the key in there. However, I have been getting the notification that my key battery is low uh, for the past month or so and just ignored it. So it didn't send it. So I locked myself out of the car at seven o'clock at night when it was, the temperature had dropped to 50 degrees and we had like 20 mile per hour winds. So I was like, oh, awesome. But also locked my purse in the car, which is where the AAA roadside service card was. Uh, so I had to call dad to get him to send me the card. 
And I had to go through all the runarounds because I'm in SoCal, but our plan is in NorCal. So then they had to like transfer me six times and they were all perfectly lovely. Like shout out the AAA people who are like, don't worry, sweetheart. These are like 90% of my calls is where they've locked the keys in the car and their purse. I'm like, I don't have my ID. I'm so sorry. It's right there. I know exactly. Like I can it see is. it right there. I can tell you. <laughs> and so, but I don't know. Like the ancestors were again looking out for Chaley because they sent then they sent it to dispatch and like literally a minute later the guy called me he was like I'm Whoa. three minutes away did you alert public safety that I'll be coming I'm like so this guy knows LMU which is because I was still at school and he was like you should let him a call let him know at the gate to let me in I was like yes sir I will and so I called public safety and they're like oh like did you tell him he needs to come through the front gate I was like ma'am he told me to call you so I feel like he knows she's like oh he knows and I'm like yeah I'm just sitting here on the hill next to my car hating myself but they like within 20 minutes I was good to go and he was like you're all set and I'm like I love you <laughs> you don't know how much I love you I wonder how many LMU kids have locked themselves out of cars that there's gotta like, be so many like I was prepared to wait an hour like and he was three within three minutes of campus and so I'm like so maybe maybe he's assigned to like the airport slash element mm -hmm. right because you're super close to the airport there's got to be a lot of like hotel rental car issue stuff oh like it was awesome so I'm just gonna count my lucky stars that and I still got to go out with my friends and it was super fun and so here we are uh but I digress I think we're supposed to share you wanted to share your thingy that you've been making. Yeah, so Chaley has requested for her birthday. I'm getting a tapestry needle while you chat about this. Um, yarn cozies. Um, sewn yarn cozies. Um, we do have, last May, I did a 30 yarn cozies in 30 days. And I've been working on yarn cozies for a bit. Um, I really liked the cookie and bees ones. Um, but she's not selling them anymore. And I haven't really been able to find anyone else on the internet that sells them that kind of work the same way. There's a lot of the kinds that have the sleeves mm -hmm. um, where each end is open, but that's not for me because I like them um, when the skein starts to collapse, it doesn't hold its shape anymore without a bottom. So I've been perfecting and I think I finally perfected it. So um, mainly I'm obsessed. I need to like sell my yarn cozies so I can make more. So, and my sister's like, are you going to make them all for me? And I was like, yeah, Ooh. there's like 45 fabrics. I don't think Chaley needs 45 yarn cozies. That's no, I was hoping for like five. Oh, well, I'm well past five. Okay. So I'm considering opening an Etsy shop for my yarn cozies. Um, they come in two sizes. So let me show you them. This is the large size. <laughs> That's dad's. Um, this, uh, what's it called? It's got a box bottom, like a project bag. Oh, right. What? So it sits like it sits flat, right? So it looks like a tiny little project bag. It is lined and mm. it's got elastic. I haven't clipped the threads on it. So it totally fits the hundred gram. It actually has a little bit of space in it because I realized that hundred gram fingering weight even though 100 grams should be 100 grams, the worsted thicker weights are bigger, right. um, which I'm sure is some kind of math science thing about volume versus area, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, um, I'm a liberal arts major. Um, so I made uh, this one. Humanities. <laughs> and then to go with it, I made this one. Oh, look at the wee thing. So this fits a 20 gram mini skein these both have fingering in it and they match i'm also very proud of my placement of maleficent's head ah uh, yeah right because like when she sits there you have maleficent staring at you and then the other side set is the ursula quote so it's a, like the placement ended up pretty good because sometimes it happens where it doesn't end like this one didn't end up as well so mm -hmm. Tell me what you think. Is this a thing? I should, I mean, I'm going to make a bunch. I might just give them away on the podcast, but if this is something you'd be interested in, I'm looking at pricing, everything will probably be under $8. Um, yeah. So I liked it. I it's say that also, I think a goal of Gab's is would be fair prices for shipping. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> oh. I can't, I can't. I. That's our, that's our latest hot take in our conversations is that it feels as though 
some of the cost for shipping for some folks is more than what it actually costs to ship things. Right, which would be fine if you wrote shipping and handling. But if you don't, and it just says shipping, that looks sketchy to me. Right, because we ship stuff out of our own pockets. All the time. Um, folks, and it's, I've never paid more than five or six dollars. For a skein of yarn. Right. Or and even, then- or even like two, I've, I've shipped like a little package. I ship stuff to you all the time. And this is within the continental U.S. Obviously, things are more expensive when you start to hit international rates, and it's not that. I don't usually purchase international yarn because shipping. I but only do it if it's like um, they have a deal. <laughs> yes. So this one also has a box bottom. They're so cute. I have a bunch of fabrics. Um, I've been working on them. So that's kind of what's coming up. Yeah. Let me know what you think. There'll probably be some giveaways with my prototypes because Chaley is getting a bunch of my prototypes that <laughs> I tried them. And I was like, ah, this will fit a 65 gram scale. <laughs> ah, this one will fit a 72 gram scale. <laughs> Excellent. That is my sister. So like she understands the process. I've Fine. actually been working on this process going on two years now I have many I've gone through many renditions which is why I've never like people have asked us before about like selling project bags selling our stuff and I wanted to make sure that I was in a good place that like I was the product was solid right and the project bags I've taught to my high schoolers so I know like the process is good I our dad like I've, I've taught like 70 people how to make these project bags so I know that it's a good process and it's manageable. I may start working on a tutorial. The problem is, is sewing tutorials are, I don't know how to approach them yet, but if you really oh, want, machines are different. Like, yeah. Um, if you really want the project bag pattern, just email it to me. I've, I have it written up for my high school students. So if you're like, how do you make them? They're the drawstring bags, like that we've got a bunch of, is that pattern. Um, I made up the pattern. These aren't I made, and I made this pattern up too, which is why Chaley has a 72 gram mini skein. So these are all, obviously it's just a box bottom bag, right? You could figure it out too. It's, I have not reinvented the wheel. I've just found a way to make it work for me. Look, I finished. Amazing. That's because Gabs talks a lot. All right. What else we got to say, Che? I just wanted to say that I'm reading a book. Oh, what you reading? I'm reading The Hypnotist's Love Story by Leanne Moriarty, and I'm loving it. It's so crazy. Nice. I was like, I was reading it last night, and I said, what? Out loud. <laughs> so it's it's been spicy. I love her. I think she, I like the vibe. Um, I like the twists. It's not like scary, icky twists for me. It's just like, it's just wild, like life twists. Um, that happened. So I really enjoyed her. Um, I we talked about Svago, but I watched all the like show versions of her books. Um, so that's been fun. And I buy all her books from Costco. Um, and I gave one to mom, and she's loving it. She's reading Big Little Lies right now, um, which I didn't realize was actually set in Australia, but then the show was set in Monterey. So I guess I didn't actually read Big Little Lies. I just owned it, but thought I had read it because I watched the show multiple times. Here I am. Um, But yeah, I'm really enjoying that. And I'm proud of myself because I'm about halfway through the book. Nice. I'm just reading an old, an old favorite book. It's not even reading. It's listening to it on audiobook. I think I couldn't, I'm selecting plays for the next year of our season, which means I'm doing a lot of reading and like trying to keep a lot of plots together. And I do, um, I'm doing the script analysis for the plays that I'm staging next year. So I like couldn't have to deal with getting into another character. You know, like when you start a new book, sometimes like, I don't know, I get nervous. Like, what if I'm not going to like it? Am I going to waste my time on a book I don't like? What if I don't understand the world and the characters and all that stuff? So, yes. Oh, I did read the Magic Knitting Pattern book by Tian Connaughton. That was the last book I read. It's not for me, but it could be for you. <laughs> that's that's my review on the book is it's not a style that's for me, um, but it could be for you. So, yes. Are you watching anything exciting on television, Chai? 
I'm still watching Criminal Minds. I'm watching a White Collar. Nice. As Little well migrants. as um, YouTube videos. And I'm watching this dude do stealth camping, which I did not know stealth camping was a thing. Um, okay. Yeah, I watched him camp out behind a police station. And try not to get caught by the police. That feels it's, stressful. Yeah. I, it's the amount of anxiety that I like because I know everything turns out okay because he posted a YouTube video. Thus, yeah, that's all. Stealth camp. Because I would never stealth camp. I wouldn't regular camp. I don't regular camp. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. What do we have coming up next, Jay? I'm going to attempt to do a travel vlog. Okay. Because I leave on Wednesday um, for a work trip. I will be in Hawaii for a week and our dad is coming with me. We will be doing three islands. So we start on Oahu and then we go to Maui in the big island. So I will attempt to do a travel vlog because I should have some time in between my different work events. Um, and hopefully since dad is coming, my traveling will go better than it did when I was in New York. Uh, she's so Hawaii. So she knows like we've yes. been there. Like it's I have I've never been to Big Island, um, but I'm only there for two days, and they're mostly travel days, anyways. There's only one stressful thing where we have only a 20 minute layover between the island hoppers, but they're island hoppers. So like I've never had to they do will, one of those. Aren't they only 20 minutes? I don't know. Well, see, that's the thing. Is like I thought it was such a short flight, but it, they have a book for like an hour. So I mean, that's why I'm like, maybe it's okay, right? Because it's like gate to gate. Um, I don't know, but like Hawaiian is the one who decided we were doing that. So I'm like, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then Did I talked to fly into Honolulu. Cause I can't you can't go from Maui to Big Islands. You have to go to Maui to Honolulu to Big Island. Oh, right. Um, so that's that's gonna be the struggle. But you know, dad, he's like, it'd be fine. And I'm like, as long as you're confident, because I'm stressed. Because I also am not convinced we're going to make it for our flight home because um, of when my fare ends. But he also seems to think it's going to be fine. Uh, so here I we are. Like, I feel like with the island hopper, even if you miss it, it's not like there's not another one. Yeah, I just might miss the fare is the problem. Yeah. Because where we land in Big Island, the fare is an hour from the airport. Because it's like out on like we land in Hilo. It's more on the Kona side. Um but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Also, like, Hawaii people are a lot more chill than, like, I would say maybe, like, the fairs on the East Coast or even in the Bay Area. So I feel like they're going to be like, ah, it's okay. <laughs> Island time. Island time. So I am excited to go do that. So hopefully I will be able to vlog that. Yeah, that sounds fun. I have, what do I have? Nothing. I'm just wrapping up the end of the school year. I'm, I have a vlog coming out on my sister's DK Mix Medley. I am trying to make a vlog every week. It's been going good. Since I closed the musical, I've had one every single week. But I also have this new mini cozy obsession. So there's that. It's really fun. The process is awesome. Before, the process made me want to hurl myself into a wall. But now, which is why when Taylor's like, can I have that for my birthday? I'm like, no. <laughs> okay well, I figured that you would like a thing that like you already had the stuff for yeah I made a couple the, there's a couple there's a couple they work they all work but a couple of them are like "Ooh, this was not your best work Gab." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's fine no I saw this I thought this on a run and I was like oh, I got it. I got it. well Thank you so much for sticking around with us in our probably not so efficient podcast, but that's, that's our vibe. I'm sure I should be back in this, 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 the mainland, um, by the time it's the next podcast, I think it should be the podcast right before your birthday. Um, yeah, don't forget to comment for the giveaway, comment on what you think about Gabs's. is cozy ideas for her business and then also comment what you think I should do for my blanket lots of commenting like get in there we'd love to see it and we really we actually want your opinion we're not yeah. really just saying this for the algorithm like we actually... I don't know what to do like we have we have questions just burning questions 
Um, so thanks so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.